When they plugged up the hole down there, water started filling into that hole where the huge vein of uh, quartz used to sit. So all that mud and water came in. That's why we had those two cars back there. They actually pulled the stuff out of here in the 80s. But this still ran, and all they had to do was dry it off with WD-40 on it. But I'll show you something. It's actually not running now, uh, today. And the ironic part is the gun still works, but the modern air pressure unit is broken. So if that shows you something about nowadays, I don't know what else won't, but that's what's not working. It's supposed to be a lot louder than that. So I apologize about that. It's broken right now. We're working on it. We're going to get it fixed. But um, it's really powerful. We would do the sledgehammer job for you. We would come out and hit the ball off right off the air pressure and come back and rotate at the same time. Build up a lot of friction when you're doing that. So they had a hole in the center right here. And that's kind of working like a radiator. The water would come out of the front here and take all that heat with it and also turn on the dust in the mud. And it come out the hole and then you didn't need to replace it so much. So you can drill a bunch of holes, clear this out, uh, blast this place full of dynamite, and then come back in and find a lot of cords, hopefully. People working here, though, would lose their hearing within about three months. That's because this thing would operate about 200 PSI. Very, very, very powerful. Now, if you look right above you folks right there, that's actually the weakest part of the tunnel. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'll show you something else about it, though. This is uh, Nikola Tesla's design. Why don't you step right there, buddy? This is Nikola Tesla's design. Um, he actually uh, figured out how to harness the energy of Niagara Falls, despite popular belief of all the scientists of his time, with this alternating current. When he did that, he was able to make smaller generators. In fact, his technology went over even into the Hoover Dam later after he passed away. But right here, they bought two of his smaller generators and put them down at the river down there next to the stamp mill. And had copper wire come all the way from those generators right through here. It has a positive charge. The carts would have rods extending up to there, and the uh, tracks would be negatively charged, and that would make the carts go up and down, kind of like bumper carts. So you can see it's slightly uphill. They did that by design. That way, the empty carts would go uphill to fight gravity. When they were full of carts, they come back down, and the gravity would help pull them back on down. Fun fact: This place is home to the very first portable restroom of their time. It was used down here. It was just a regular cart. And you would smell it coming probably before you heard it. You would come around the corner, everyone had to pile on it and do their business and get off. You had no soap, no running water, and what's it all, no soap. So it was really smelly down here after a while. We're going to head on up this way. Anyways, just went towards the family budget to bring food on the table and everything. And that's because 
when you moved down here, you didn't have any property usually, so you had to pay rent. And rent prices were very, very high, kind of like how they are in North Dakota with the oil bill up there. The rent's very high, and that takes a lot of your money away. So even though you'll end up at the end of the day making more money than people would in Dahlonega, a lot of it's going to be gone to rent and taxes and paying for food and everything. So everyone would gather up into this hole. When they heard fire in the hole, you'd have about five minutes to get in here. You'd be off to a 90 degree angle of the dynamite going off. And most of that shot would go by. You'd have to cover your ears, though, so your ear comes when it burst. Actually open up your mouth so your lungs didn't expand too much. Imagine having your lungs expand into your body. That would be bad for the rest of your organs and stretch out your lungs. So they're going to both of those things probably the hard way. Very dangerous down here. Also, you would get silicosis when you left and went to go find that quartz that just got blasted on the ground because that quartz will still be in the air. That silicosis would start when it got into your lungs. When it got into your lungs, it would start scratching up against your lungs and making you bleed internally. So there were lots of things that get harmed down here. All right, we're gonna head up this way. Down there, right? What a difference. I know. <laughs> 